Energy storage and transfer is a huge deal for engineers. One property of energy is that it can't change instantly. Let's take a look at this property in the context of determining a car's speed and acceleration. It's my very stylized picture of a car. It has a mass, m, and some velocity, v. A typical way to model this would be using Newton's second law. This tells us that the applied force is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. This can be written as a derivative of velocity with respect to time, dv dt. In this particular model, we're modeling the car as a lump of mass. So this is a lumped parameters model. But what does this model tell us if we try to stop the car suddenly? Let's run our car into a wall. This should suddenly drop the car's velocity to zero. So if we plot the velocity of the car as a function of time, we're very happily going along at some non-zero velocity. We hit the wall and suddenly our velocity drops to zero. At this point here, the rate of change of velocity becomes infinite. The rate of change of velocity or the acceleration is infinite that means that the force is mass times infinity so the force applied also goes to infinity so suddenly stopping the car requires infinite force we don't have infinite force available to us in the real world so this is not a useful engineering design tool So the conclusion resulting from this particular model is unrealistic. There's no way you can design a car to keep the passenger safe if an infinite force is applied. However, as an engineer, you can't just say, I can't design a car to withstand infinite force. So if you run the car into a wall, the passengers will die and there's no point in trying to keep them safe. Infinity isn't a useful number for an engineer. What you need to be able to do is to say, this math isn't helping me. I need a different model. It's probably more realistic to use what is called a distributed parameters model in this case. With the distributed parameters model, we don't need to assign the entire car a single velocity. Different parts of the car can be going at different speeds. So my car, for example, can have a different velocity at the front, v1, than it does at the back, v2. Now if we run this car model into a wall, the front of the car can stop suddenly while the back of the car keeps moving. This will accurately model the crushing effect the car will experience in real life, and it gives us a tool to design the car to keep the passengers safe. This particular model will require us to use partial differential equations. These are mathematically considerably harder to deal with than this original Newton's ordinary differential equation. But it's necessary if we're going to actually do our job and keep the passengers safe if somebody accidentally runs this car into a wall. 